Jackie Gleason's The Honeymooners is undeniably one of the most beloved and watched comedies of all time. Even though it ran as a half-hour sitcom for just one season, we should remember that the sketches were presented in a variety of different ways for almost 30 years. At one point, they were aired live, but mostly they were recorded on film or on tape. Most were in black and white, but a few were in color. The sketches have been presented as a sketch comedy, situation comedy, and even as a musical. The Honeymooners has flourished on both network, cable television, and in syndication. What an incredible resume it has. It seems that in whatever presentation, audiences and fans have held and continue to hold Ralph, Ed, Alice, and Trixie close to their hearts. This is a two-part series about the Honeymooners. The first video, we looked into the actors that played the roles, and I'll leave a link in the description for the first video. But in this video, the second of the series, we're going to look at the production stories that added to the success, magic, and legacy of the Honeymooners. Many of the ideas in the sketches were developed by Gleason himself. The show was very close to his heart because it brought back memories of his childhood. One little known fact is that the address for the Cramdons, which was 328 Chauncey Street, was the actual address of Gleason's childhood apartment where he grew up. He intentionally designed this sparsely furnished apartment to resemble the Chauncey Street accommodations that he grew up in. Gleason limited the press access in promotion of the show. This worked well with his intent of creating the most authentic atmosphere possible. It was almost too realistic for some. When audiences tuned in to the Honeymooners, some people thought they were actually being invited into the home of a real family, which generated some unusual mail. Some of the fan mail received actually included household items that fans thought that Alice needed in her home. Fans stated that they sent these items because they wanted the characters to have nice things in their home. In some cases, they actually even sent the Crandons money. Back in the infancy of television, most shows filmed one episode a week. The Honeymooners, though, filmed two episodes a week. That wasn't the only filming innovation that Gleason utilized. Instead of filming on a soundstage, the whole production was recorded at the Delphi Theater in Manhattan in front of a crowd of 1,000 people. Many of the early television shows were performed live and recorded using kinescope technology, also known as telerecording. It was the process of recording a television show on 35 millimeter film directly through the lens focused on the screen of a video monitor. For the Honeymooners, Gleason utilized the Electronicam TV film system developed by Dumont in the early 1950s. This innovation combined a live TV camera and a film camera in the same device. It made it possible to shoot the show live and film it at the same time. The filmed version of the show could then be edited and saved. As a result of the superior picture and sound quality provided by the systems, episodes of The Honeymooners were much more suitable to be replayed on television years later. And it was those reruns that helped build the legacy of the show. Jackie Gleason did not believe in rehearsals. He preferred his performances to be fresh and spontaneous. He would usually agree to a one-time run-through per script. He would limit the number of crew on hand since he wanted the cameraman and the stagehands to hear and react to the jokes for the first time on filming nights. Now, the rest of the crew preferred to go into the performances much more prepared. They would rehearse on their own with someone else reading Ralph's lines. Jackie Gleason would look at a script once and remember every line. It is also well known that he would occasionally forget some of his lines. To signal his lapses, he would pat his stomach. That was to alert his co-stars that they needed to ad lib long enough for him to regain his composure and catch up and continue with the scene. 
Speaking of lines, it's fascinating to learn how rarely Ralph Cramden's catchphrases were actually used. Baby, you're the greatest was only said in nine of the original 39 episodes. Pow, right in the kisser, came only once, and that was near the end of the season. Yet it's become synonymous with the show. Ralph's popular phrase, bang, zoom, might be another saying that has become synonymous with the honeymooners. But the phrase was actually never written into the scripts. Gleason had outstanding improv skills. He would add the catchphrase spontaneously as he thought of it in the moment. For several months after its premiere, the series was very close to beating out I Love Lucy in the ratings. Gleason was being hailed as the king of Saturday night television. After a few months, rival network NBC moved its popular variety series, The Perry Como Show, to Saturday nights, to compete with the Honeymooners on CBS. The show started losing momentum, falling in the Nielsen ratings from number 2 to number 19. CBS was actually considering canceling the show. Gleason, however, pulled the plug himself after 39 episodes, stating that the writers had exhausted all the plots for a half-hour sitcom. He wanted to go out on a high note before the writing suffered. In a 1996 interview with Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show, Gleason was asked why he only did 39 episodes. He admitted that he and the writers were running out of ideas. He liked doing The Honeymooners, but he didn't want to diminish their work by forcing scenes and dialogue that did not mean anything. Some thought that he had been offered another job somewhere. That was not it. He just wanted to stop. He believed what they did was very good, and if he had continued, it might have spoiled everything. The Honeymooners is widely considered to be the first official TV spinoff series, and even though it aired for only one standalone season, it became a huge inspiration and influence on many other shows to come. The Honeymooners has truly stood the test of time and is fittingly iconic. Thank you, Ralph, Ed, Alice, and Trixie for all the laughs and especially the memories. Thank you, Jackie Gleason, for your vision, ingenuity, and your talents that kept us completely entertained for the last seven decades. Thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to chase the classics.